Reportedly, this bridge was uh, opened without a safety audit. The number of people to be allowed on the bridge at any point of time was reached with more than double or three times the number permitted. And it's a ticketed entry and the tickets were sold. And it was the, the renovation was done by a company that produces clocks, wall clocks, and not in terms of technically whether it's competent to look after the bridge or not. Now this is the sort of thing that is recurring in our country under the Modi government. You had the Kundalikan Expressway. With great fanfare, the Prime Minister inaugurated. Five days after that, sections of the Expressway caved in. So you have the sort of contract that are being given, to whom they are being given, what is the competence of the a matter of serious concern because they are claiming lives of innocent people. So the Senate Committee demands that there should be a judicial inquiry into this accident and accountability must be fixed and punishment according to law must be meted out. The second uh, issue that we concerned was our grave uh, concern over the manner in which central state relations are being undermined and this process is continuing with the governors in various states, particularly the opposition to states, acting to advance the agenda of the ruling BJP and the Senate. We've seen this happen in the past with various governors in states where there was, that had no BJP state government. Now this has come to the fore again with the Kerala government first asking Vice Chancellor to resign because he is also the Chancellor. As the Chancellor, the Governor, the Chancellor doesn't have the right. According to the acts passed by the Kerala Legislative Assembly that govern these universities, he has no right to ask for the recall of any Vice Chancellor. As a Governor, he went on to ask for the withdrawal or removal of the finance minister and he said that he withdraws his pleasure of having a point of view. Under the constitution he has got no such right. That right is the right under the constitution given to the chief minister to decide on the ministers of the cabinet and the governor has to appoint that is under, under the constitutional mandate to go by the advice of the Council of Ministers and the Chief Minister. So in both the cases, it doesn't have the authority. But targeting the higher education system in Kerala, we believe is got a political objective. And that political objective is what we have seen the BJP doing with its new education policy of controlling the institution of higher education in order to rewrite Indian history, in order to reshape the consciousness and thinking of our people on an unscientific manner, and assaulting scientific temper and rationality, which is the hallmark of all the high institutes of higher education. The targeting of JNU, the targeting of Central University in Hyderabad, the targeting even of the Benares in the University. Apart from the Central Universities of Aligarh and Jamia Media and the IITs in various parts of the country are all part of this exercise to restructure higher education system in India to suit the propagation of the Hindu ideology. Now this is a very very serious matter because it acts not merely distorts Indian history but it actually gives a level of consciousness to our youngsters which is bereft of scientific temper, which is therefore prone to growth of obscuritism, to superstition and to blind faith which suits the Hindu ideology. So this is a larger fight which the CPM decided we have to engage in. Now it's happened also that the way the manner in which the governor is behaving in Tamil Nadu, the entire state government and the ruling, the secular democratic alliance, the secular front government there. 
has actually come out very strongly against what the governor is doing. We have seen the governor's actions earlier in Maharashtra, where an elected government was toppled, an ordinary government was being elected. The governor was distributing sweets for the ordinary government. So these sort of, and all, many of these governors are actually sitting on the bills and legislations approved by the legislature, state legislature, without either approving them by signing them or returning them. If they don't agree with that uh, legislation that the assembly has passed, they can return it back with their suggestion, saying why they are not, uh, were not approving it. But they don't do that either. So they leave all the legislations passed by the state as some reason they leave Now that is a very serious problem because the state governments, elected state governments, cannot carry out their mandate of being elected by the people of the state. Therefore the central committee decided that we will appeal to all the secular democratic parties, particularly the parties that have that run state governments to come together, rally together on this issue of the role of the governors and how these parties must come together in order to resist this attack on federalism that is being mounted by the federal governments and the BJP governments. And these attacks on federalism are also beyond the role of the governors. You have seen the Prime Minister now talk of one country, one police union. No, law and order is a state subject, according to the Constitution. Police is directly under the state government, except in union territories like Delhi, where it is under the central government, Home Ministry. So, to say that one country, one police uniform is actually encroaching on the rights of the states. Now, this sort of uh, things that are, that are taking place today and to stabilize elected government. Huge amounts of uh, money were offered to MLA's ruling Telangana Rashtra Samiti MLA's in Telangana in order to defect and join the BJP. We have seen this happen in the past, how democracy is destroyed. BJP loses the election but forms the government. Goa, Karnataka, Madhya Pradesh and the subsequently in the northeast a number of places and later in Maharashtra. Now this sort of uh, a toppling game using the money central agencies etc. then is destroying the world. So against all this, we we'll, we are approaching and we have begun approaching the secular democratic parties that run state governments to come together and take a unified position to resist these assaults on federalism and the state's rights. The third issue that we discussed was the very, very sad, sorry and dismal state of the Indian economy. For three times the World Bank has lowered the forecast for FY23, that is 22-23. It has brought it down from 8.7% to 6.5%. Our own RBI has brought it down from 7.8 to 7.2 to now 7%. Industrial growth, Prime Minister talks of India being the world's industrial manufacturing job. That's what he claimed two days ago. And what is the industrial thing? It is that industrial growth is at an 18 month low. Our core sector, eight core sectors, which is the core of our industry and manufacturing, do at 9.8% compared to 19.4% last year, that is when the COVID impact was still there. Even from there, there has been a big downside. The rupee is crashed, foreign exchange reserves have dwindled, your trade deficit is widening in a, at a record level. So, in all parameters, the Indian economy is fast plunging into a recession. While this has a long term, you know, a very disastrous impact, even in the short term, it is having a very big impact on people's livelihood. Your unemployment has reached a record high, 7.8% during the festive period. 
Normally, this is the period when employment rises. There's lots of informal work, formal work, a lot of production that takes place. But during this festive period from Dasra, Diwali onwards till the Chat is there, the employment, employment fell. And when the employment is falling, during this, this year, the central government refused to increase funds for the Rega scheme. Net result is 1.5 crore people. 15 million people were turned back and refused to work. Prime Minister of Finance Minister say the Manrega is demand driven. If people ask for jobs, we will do that. But then 1.5 crore till October this year, till March down. So this is the economy more visible. But even last year, they were a bit refused, 1.73 crores were refused work. 2.1 were refused work in the year before. Unemployment is growing. Rega, that is the only source of, uh, some source of livelihood. For that, the funds are being obtained. This we think is absolutely inhuman. And on top of this situation comes your price rise. Nine months in a row, the price rise has reached the RBA limit of this project. And this is truly great burdens on people's livelihoods. So you should see the Central Committee will give a call for the entire party all over the country, the Green and the City Hall, to organize protest actions all over the country on these issues at the local level and to strengthen the struggles from below and from the classroom level to culminate in what the workers, the disarmed uh, and the executive labor unions have given a call to the march to parliament during the budget session. And that will be the big uh, mobilization of the country's working people against these policies that are ruining their lives. So along with these uh, issues, the internal committee also decided that we will call for the broadest mobilization of secular forces against this communal polarization that is sharpening. All the election campaigns of our Prime Minister, the, that is preceded by either the Prime Minister's visit to Kedana to offer Punya or to Ayodhya to do at the makeshift temple in Punya or like what we have seen in the new parliament building, the national symbol that was opened up with a Hindu religious ritual. The entire, entire effort is to say that India is already in the first state. The state is performing its, uh, its religious activity and this is complete violation of our constitutional foundation. Now, apart from this, the instances of targeting minorities and do something what we saw in Kheda in Gujarat, where Muslim youth were publicly beaten and flogged by policemen in plain clothes. Now, this sort of incidents have targeted attacks against the minorities. This is becoming a regular practice, which is absolutely destroying the country's unity and integrity. So as against this, the CPM will take the initiative, speak to all the secular opposition parties to do something jointly in order to maintain communal harmony, maintain the constitutional values of democracy, secular democracy, and for that joint activity should be undertaken. Likewise, the Central Committee also decided that it's been three years now since the, the state of Jammu and Kashmir was called a special state of withdrawal. And all the claims that the central government is making about economic development or peace or uh, reduction in terrorist violence have all turned out to be just propaganda. And the reality is completely to the opposite. The targeted killings of Kashmiri Pandits and the laborers, the migrants who came in from our, who come in from outside of JNK. This is on the rise. So this is something needs to be done about this. So the CPM will initiate along with the left party. Discussions with the secular 
parties, both in the Jammu and Kashmir and outside, in order to build up a joint pressure on the central government to take tangible actions for providing relief in the to the people in the state who are still continue to be denied of the democratic rights, civil liberties, and also the basic rights as citizens of India. In the forthcoming assembly elections, CPM has fielding 11 candidates in Himachal Pradesh. And we'll suppose one candidate, the only one that the CPI is fielding there. And in the rest of the 56 constituencies, out of the 68, the CPM and the left will work for the defeat of the BJP. In every constituency, the force that can defeat the BJP, that will receive our support. So that will be the <coughs> major focus. And in Gujarat, since the Central, Central Election Commission has chosen to deal with the announcement of the schedule, giving BJP and the Prime Minister more time to inaugurate. And, and to do campaign before the modern world of order is in Gujarat. Even till today, the Prime Minister is still announcing <coughs> new schemes, new projects, and many of the central schemes he is announcing as his personal gifts, Diwali gifts to the people of Gujarat, using state, state funds, which is completely unethical and unbecoming. But anyway, given, given this entire thing, the dates have not been, the schedule has not been announced. We are in talks with the other secular forces with the objective of maximizing the pooling of anti BJP vote. The Central Committee hailed the victory of Lula in Brazil, a very uh, tight contest, but the left has the uh, one, which is a very, very positive development in Latin America. Because Brazil now joins, apart from socialist Cuba, Brazil now joins Chile, Bolivia, Colombia, Peru, Honduras, and others who have a left oriented president. So there is an anti neoliberal, anti US imperialist tide that is sweeping in Latin America, which is of good. Uh, of good sense that this counters the trend in Europe and elsewhere of a right wing of it. the victory of the political right in uh, Italy. And ominously, this lady of Italy was sworn in as a Prime Minister exactly 100 years, exactly 100 years after, to the date, after Mussolini marches with his proud troopers to on Rome and captures power. A hundred years later, you have the fascist uh, coalition They're coming back in Italy. You have that uh, right-wing change in Sweden. So, as accounted to all of this, the left-wing shifts in Latin America, that will provide the <coughs> resistance, the impetus for the resistance of the right-wing opposition. The Central Committee unanimously elected Dr. M. V. Govindan, State Secretary of the Kerala Union of CPI, to the Foreign Bureau. And uh, as I said earlier, we have given this concrete call for protest actions all over the country, support to the joint actions calls given by the trade unions, the Sansabas, and the Indian Labour Union, and to focus on forcing the Central Government to release more funds for one regular so that at least people have some basis for their livelihood and hunger and poverty do not lead even further in the country. So these are some of the major decisions that we have taken. Now if you have any, any questions, you don't know. Central Committee. <laughs> गवर्नर के जरिए गवर्नर राज्यपाल के जरिए तो आप बाकी राज्यों के यहां पे सेक्युलर पार्टियां उनको अप्रोच करेंगे कि एक होकर के सिर्फ बंगाल के भी सरकार चला रही है
उसी गवर्नर को जाके समर्थन किया ना उपराष्ट्रपति बनने बनने किया ना तो तो वैसी बात कहा हो रही है वहां पर अब बंगाल के मुख्यमंत्री किसके साथ टेंशन दी कब होगी वहां भी बता हम कह रहे कि राज्यपालों का जो रुझान है आज वो गैर जनतांत्रिक है हमारे संविधानिक ढांचे के विपरीत है और संविधान जो कहता है उसका सीधा सीधा उल्लंघन अब राज्य असेंबली जो कानून बनाते हैं उन कानूनों को या अनुमति दे गवर्नमेंट नहीं तो वापस भेजे सरकार को कि किस वजह से नहीं दे रहे अब अब क्या हो रहा है 